Today we're going to share our rabbit tractor designs with you. It's important to us that the animals on our homestead are raised in happy, healthy conditions. We have a saying, happy food tastes better. Part of raising your own food is knowing what goes into it, what the animals have eaten, and also the conditions that they've been raised in. So along the journey, we decided that we wanted to tractor raise our rabbits to meat. This allows for a couple things. It allows them to move to fresh graze every day when the grass is growing. It allows them fresh air and sunshine, and it cuts down on our feed cost. The first step in making this tractor is to cut all your pieces of wood to length. We build the top frame first and then we build everything on top of that, even though it's the top. And that kind of gives us our guideline, our where we square it up so we can make sure everything's gonna line up right when we put it together. Our numbers uh, don't break on even digits, even though it's eight foot. And you would think if we did four foot, there should be two six foot box, two foot left over. Um, well, we ripped down two by four, so we split them in half. And so that actually gives us a one and a three quarter instead of a, a true two by two dimension. So we're dealing with a one and a half in one dimension and a one and three quarter in another dimension. So it's important that if you're ripping your own lumber to save some money, uh, make sure you orientate it the right way and double check those measurements before you cut. Now here's the thing, on this one, you gotta look where your screws are here and visually miss them. We can try. There is no try, there's do. Okay. Oh. That's how I did the other one. I can do it, but I can do it to the best of my ability. Okay. Ready, Carter? Grab once, cut once. This is gonna be the roof. It will be hinged. It will open like this to give us access to the rabbits. You can see this back section is a good five and a half, six inches off the ground. And that is for two reasons. One, we get a lot of water that flows through our yard. We live in a very rainy area that gives the rabbits, the chicks, whatever animals in here, an area to go up off the grass away from wet, damp ground when it's cold. Also, we have wheels that we will attach at each end, and this gives it a little bit of space to lift and for the wheels to um, turn for us to put in the nuts and bolts and things that we need to. This end will be the house end of the tractor. We will enclose it with metal so that they will have a place that to go that is sheltered from wind and rain and snow. When we decided we want to raise meat rabbits, I started watching tons of videos and I watched Kevin and Sarah's series in entirety. I'll put a link to their playlist in the description down below. We really liked their tractor design and um, that's where our basic idea for this tractor started and since then I've had opportunity to see other people's tractors and what they're doing and so we've kind of added to it and made some changes as we've gone along. We're offering these plans to you for free. All you have to do is send an email to lorella at planborchard.farm. That email address is also listed in the description down below. After all the wooden pieces have been put together, the next step is to put on the hardware cloth. We learned something from our mistakes the last time we made this. So our suggestion would be that you cut the whole piece of hardware cloth to wrap all three sides, and then you notch out for this handle, it's two sections notched out. So it was 48 inches, we notched out 48 and 49 here, and then we slotted it and we came to this side, we notched out these two sections and slotted it 
and then we stapled this front end first and then um, oh we cut the bottom the excess off the bottom and then got this front end stapled and then we wrapped our, the corners and are doing the sides and it's been actually very easy last time was uh, quite um, it wasn't difficult as in complicated but just like clumsy I'm, I can't think of the word for that like I go as smooth as yeah yeah it wasn't as smooth as it could have been this time it's going really nice easy peasy so yeah the, the key here being uh, notching this and then sliding your metal up and then wrapping the sides last time we tried to start at the far side and bring it around and and wiggle it up like that and it just didn't work so yeah. notching both fronts and then sliding it Putting up it in place boom. before we stapled yeah that's, that makes all the difference in this, getting it all in one piece. 100%. Inside the tractor, we're using a piece of wood to divide the housing area from the run area of the tractor. We've left a six inch opening so that the rabbits or chickens can get in and out of there without any problem. On the bottom of the tractors, we're using two inch by four inch hardware cloth. This lets the grass come up in between the wires so that the rabbits or chickens can eat it without them being able to dig out of it. Around the sides of the tractor, we're using one inch by two inch hardware cloth. This is small enough to keep predators out. The bottom of the tractor inside the housing area sits up a few inches off the ground. And on that hardware cloth, we're using half inch by one inch, which is the standard size you would use for the bottom of a rabbit's cage. What you got going on here, Mr. Cruz? All right, putting in some hinges. Um, you, you want to use uh, wood screws for this and not just like any old screw. Usually if you buy a good set of hinges they come with screws. Um, for outdoor stuff you want to definitely get stainless for the longest life but it's going to be the most expensive uh, or galvanized or what they might call zinc plated. Then we add the metal to the sides and back of the tractor. We are using screws that are specifically designed for screwing on metal siding or metal roofing they have a little um, rubber piece that gives it a good seal so that you don't have any leakage into uh, the tractor the door of the tractor is on top of it this is where you're going to get in to let your chickens or your rabbits in it to check their feet in water to take the animals out uh, and that also gets a metal piece that covers it. On the first tractor we made we had an overhang on each side of a couple inches. That's just so that water would be deflected away from the tractor when it's raining. And I would recommend doing that on the second tractor we made. We're using metal that we already had in the house and the scrap piece that we had was just exactly the size of the lid. I wouldn't recommend it doing that way. I would recommend having an overhang on both sides. So here is our almost finished chicken tractor. We have added a handle to make it easy to get into. On the other one, we didn't have a handle yet and we're having to grab the edge of metal. Another thing I really like about this tractor design are the kickstands. I saw this at Kenny Filer's farm and I just thought it was genius. This is fantastic. Now I can get in, change their feed, get rabbits out or chickens or whatever and not have to hold this open and hope it doesn't close on me while I'm bending over in there. The next thing to do is add the wheels on the back of the tractor. The other day I was taking a nap, which I rarely do, and I was rudely awakened by the sounds of the uh, cordless saw in the garage. I'm like, what is going on in there? And I went in there and Chris was building this. And I thought, what in the world are you doing? Let me show you what he was doing with this. When I went in the garage and found Chris making this, he said he'd had an idea because we're currently using this tractor to house a mama and her nine chicks. And the chicks are plenty big that the mama could be bringing them out every day to free range and going back in at night. But there's no way to get them out of here without them jumping in and out over the outside edge. Unless Chris's idea is to put a door into our tractor in the garage that we're still making that would swing out at this end. It would open up, and if you have chickens, they could come in and out during the day, and then you can close them back up safely at night. 
I actually think that's pure genius. Sometimes Chris has really super ideas. In fact, most of the time, Chris has really super ideas. We're actually a pretty good team when we work together on projects. We like to take our time and think about it and talk through and really plan them out so that we get what we want. Um, we have found that that works really well for us. And a lot of times we'll design it and then we'll wait a couple weeks and then we go back to our design and then we wait a couple weeks and before we actually get into production. And that has helped us to really um, come up with quality housing for our animals here on our homestead. Thanks for watching. What do you think of our tractor design? If you'd like a free copy of our plans, be sure and send an email to Lorella at planborchard.farm. Hands. Then Show me your jazz hands. It's getting kind of cold outside. Do you want to go grab a sweater? Cold. No. She just took she it off put a, a minute she ago. put a jacket on, you're not working hard enough. Word. At least it's not windy. Yesterday was cold, windy, miserable. I've got this pear that just wants to hang out right in front of my eye. Ooh, that sun. It's making me squinty. Make sure the wood doesn't fall on me, right? anything for the good camera angle it's like it's like one of the, if some of those like crazy raccoons like you see in the movies teamed up they might be able to get this open i don't know it was tough for me i think i'm stronger than a raccoon but they're smarter <laughs> today we're going to share our rabbit tractor rabber <laughs>